Welcome to Experiencing Hope with Dr. William Clements at Antelope Christian Center. Throughout Dr. Clements' 50 years of teaching ministry, the power of God's life-changing Word has always been the forefront, locally, nationally, and globally. You can find more of these dynamic Bible teachings on our website at antelopechristian.org. And now may you be blessed with Dr. William Clements' latest teaching from the series, The Year of the Bible. Take your Bibles, turn with me to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1. Today we examine and study what God's Word says to us about serving. I consider the Gospel of John to be one of the fundamental books in the Bible. I believe it's essential for every new believer to read. It will strengthen your salvation. The second book I highly recommend, a year or two after someone has given their heart to the Lord, is a careful study of the book of Romans. Paul the Apostle deals with our spiritual growth. Some who study theology use the word sanctification. Growing in our faith begins with the Gospel of John. The next step is the book of Romans. And 2 Timothy, I refer to that as graduate school. It's all about serving. Our salvation, our sanctification, and serving. The meat of the word is found in 2 Timothy, as Paul writes to this young minister named Timothy. Paul writes in chapter 1, verse 1, This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. I have been sent out to tell others about the life he has promised through faith in Christ Jesus. I think of this short book as being a handbook on how to serve in ministry, on how to serve others as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. Well, the Gospel of John is a study of the life of Christ, the teachings of Christ, the miracles of Christ, the birth and the death and the resurrection of Christ, and whereas Romans is about us growing in our spiritual faith and the struggle we have with that new nature and the old nature. And though Paul encourages us that we are more than conquerors and nothing can separate us from the love of God, and he introduces in the book of Romans that each and every one of us has a spiritual gift. But when we turn to the book of 2 Timothy, we're in grad school. We are going to discover and examine What this veteran missionary and teacher, Paul the Apostle, has to say to young Timothy on what is required, the priorities, the responsibilities of those that are serving the Lord. He begins by letting us know that he's the author and it's addressed to this young servant named Timothy. A little backstory of Timothy and Paul's relationship goes back several years. We find Timothy in Lystra in Acts chapter 16. Paul the apostle is out on a missionary journey and he comes to Lystra and when he does he finds this young believer named Timothy. The Bible reveals to us by the pen of Luke in Acts 16 that Timothy's mother was Jewish and his father was Greek. We also discover that early on, Paul recruits, invites Timothy to join him on his missionary journey. He recognizes that Timothy is well respected in Lystra. 
But before they go too far, Paul asked Timothy to do something very unusual. He asks him to become circumcised. He doesn't ask Titus later on, but he does young Timothy. The reason is that his mother was Jewish and his father was Greek. And he didn't want there to be any confusion or debate about circumcision for Timothy to deal with. Being a leader, serving is not about us. It's about developing rapport and relationship. Circumcision, Paul of all people, made crystal clear, especially in the book of Acts chapter 15, has nothing to do with our salvation. Paul would write later on, I've become all things to all men that I might win some to Christ. In every culture, there are do's and don'ts that are accepted. I lived in Tokyo, Japan in the late 60s. And my friends in high school, I would greet them with a handshake. But when I went off base and developed relationships with families that were from and lived in Japan, they were Japanese, handshakes were not embraced. It was a nod or a bow of respect. Here we discover in the life of young Timothy, Paul developing that sense of otherness in ministry. Now, when he begins this handbook on what it is to be a servant and all of the obstacles and the pitfalls of serving people, he lays it out very, very clearly that there are spiritual gifts. And here he gives to us the first attribute in the life of young Timothy that must be a priority. He writes in chapter 1, verse number 6, I want to remind you to fan the flame of the spiritual gift God has given you when I laid my hands upon you. The very first attribute in the handbook of service is to recognize the spiritual gift God has given to you and to keep that pilot light lit. And in the words of Paul, we must fan the flame. In every industry, there is burnout. In every industry, there is the routine and the mundane. There is the stress and the ongoing workload. Sometimes not being appreciated, taken for granted. We must fundamental to, fundamentally have this attribute of fanning the flame of the spiritual gift God has given us. You are unique and special. He is the potter and you are the clay. And he's molded you and shaped you to serve him in a particular fashion. And as Paul would write, one is a hand and one is a foot. One is an eye and one is an ear. And the whole body fits together neatly. It's knitted together. And everyone's important and everyone's has a different part. But we must know our spiritual gift. And we must fan the flame and stay the course. Stay in our own lane, the coach said to the swim team. Stay in your own lane. Recognize who you are, that you are unique and special. And that that passion that you started the race with, you end the race with. 
the second attribute in the handbook of serving is our doctrine. Paul would write to young Timothy in chapter 1 of 2 Timothy verse 13, hold on to the wholesome teaching you learned from me. Know the Bible. Know the scripture. Know the doctrine. And don't get caught up in trends and what's popular. Don't listen to others that are the number one bestsellers or the most popular or the most controversial. No, no. You stick to the basics. Know the fundamentals. When I was a young man graduating from Bible college, I had the opportunity to choose a denomination. And I carefully weighed out the doctrine of very specific denominations. And I said, this is what I believe. This is where I align my heart to serve. Paul wrote, be ye steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, that you know your labor and your life is not in vain. But when you do that, your pathway is established on a foundation of doctrine, what the Bible teaches. And you must never waver. You must never be influenced by the headlines of a television a podcast, a news article. You must stick to the fundamentals of your doctrine. The third attribute Paul writes about to Timothy is found in chapter 2 of 2 Timothy, and he speaks of character. And he gives to Timothy 10 character qualities that are necessary to be that instrument in the hand of God. To be that servant that God has anointed you and spiritually gifted you to do. Let's look at these ten qualities. Ten qualities of the character that Paul was writing to Timothy. Number one, you must teach that doctrine that you hold dear to your heart. Number one, teach the doctrine, verse number two of chapter two. Teach the truth and the doctrine to others. Number two, he said, you need to endure. You need to be strong. This is not the 20-yard dash. This is a marathon Marathons are many miles, 10 miles, 20 miles, 24, 25. They have ultra marathons today and they go 100 miles in about 30 hours. And they're not on flat surfaces. They're through the Rocky Mountains or they're through the High Sierra. In our region, we have a race called up in Squaw Valley region, the western states, 100 miles, and it starts in Squaw Valley and it goes all the way down to Auburn, California, 100 miles through the Sierra. And Paul is saying the first quality you must have in your character is to teach sound doctrine. The second quality you must do have is the strength of character to endure. And he gives three different examples. He says, you need to be like a soldier's and not get tied up in the common affairs of the city or civilian life. You need to be like an athlete and you need to know the rules and run the race. You need to be like a hard working farmer. You must accept this challenge of planting the seed and cultivating the seed and being there to harvest the seed. You must be prepared to endure the challenging and the difficult. Thirdly, he says, remember the basics. 
Remember why you're doing what you're doing. It seems rather obvious saying this to a young minister like Timothy, but nonetheless he says, teach the word, endure suffering, and the third quality says, know and remember the basics that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our salvation. The fourth quality he gives is that we would work hard. Verse 15 of chapter 2. Work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. And it's kind of odd because the fourth and the fifth quality he gives to Timothy deals with work. First of all, he says, work hard. And the second thing he says is, be a good worker. I've known people that worked hard. They were fast at what they did. They were very quick. They were very, very skilled. But working hard and being a good worker is not the same. And Paul lays that out. Whatever your ministry is, whatever your act of service is, be a good worker. Be a hard worker. It means that you show up. It means that you're prepared to serve. It means the quality of what you do is of the highest quality. A young man is hired, and he's a hard worker, so he is promoted and paid well. But then one day he's let go and he's so confused. He has a reputation of being a hard worker. And he doesn't understand being so gifted and skilled why he was released. But you see, it had to do with being a good worker. It had to do with the quality of what he was doing. Yes, he worked hard, but he was not fruitful. He did more damage than he did good. Paul says to young Timothy, he says, you must teach sound doctrine, you must endure suffering, you must remember the basics, and you must be a hard worker and a good worker. And the fifth, sixth quality he gives is to avoid... Foolish trash talking. It's worthless and don't get involved in those things. Number seven, he said, keep yourself pure. Don't allow yourself to be tainted by the things in this world. Hang out with the right kinds of people. Hang out with people that will challenge you and strengthen you in your walk of faith, in your service to others to glorify Christ. Keep yourself pure. Stay away from those that would stain or soil your spirit. Number eight, he said, run away from anything that would create a desire that would be evil and wrong. Number nine, he says, don't get involved. Don't get involved in arguments, whether they're religious or political, theological. Stay away from foolish arguments. And number 10, Paul wrote to Timothy, when you teach, teach from a humble gentle spirit. Paul says that we must renew our spiritual gift and hold on to sound doctrine. And we must be people of character to serve the way God wants us to serve. And he explains that that, that character, that what that character looks like, it, it means to teach Bible. It means to endure the difficult. It means to remember the basics that Christ is the center of every message and that number four, we work hard. Number five, we're good workers. Number six, that we avoid worthless trash talking. Number seven, that we keep ourselves pure in our spirit 
Number eight, that we run away from anything that would taint us. Number nine, that we would never get involved in ignorant arguments that only end in fights. And finally, number 10, he instructs young Timothy to teach with a humble and a gentle spirit. Second Timothy is the meat of the word. John is about our salvation. And when you read the gospel of John and you recognize for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, we are drawn to the gospel of John and the teachings and the miracles of Jesus and the story of his death and his resurrection. And when we turn to the book of Romans, our spiritual journey and growth, how it develops and deepens by studying what Paul wrote to the church in Rome. Second Timothy is not for the meek. Second Timothy is the meat of God's word. It teaches us to have sound doctrine, to fan the spiritual flame that God has put within our heart, that spiritual gift, to keep the passion alive, to keep the joy, the energy, the strength, and to have character. I challenge you to study chapter 3 of 2 Timothy, these 19 different characteristics of the last days. I'll focus on just a few. He warns Timothy that in the last days, people would become lovers of themselves and money. He warns them that people in the last days will consider nothing sacred that they'll become cruel and filled with hate, that there'll come a generation of great random violence. Does it sound like the days that you are living in today? Paul warned Timothy in the last days, they'll be difficult because people would love pleasure rather than God. And finally, that they would act religious but they would reject the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, what a powerful chapter. Second Timothy chapter 3. Finally, Paul addresses his own personal credentials and he reminds Timothy of his personal patience in ministry to inspire and encourage him and the way in which he's been persecuted. And then he gives him the key, the key to ministry. There are so many temptations when you're serving. There's so many incredible gifted writers today I surf Amazon oftentimes to find the number one best-selling book in the category of spiritual and Christianity. But Paul warns the curriculum must be the word of God. And he says to young Timothy, all scripture is inspired by God. It's useful or profitable to teach what is true, to rebuke to correct, and to instruct. Five reasons Paul lays out why the Bible must be the curriculum and the sole curriculum in the pulpit of the church. That's what Paul is teaching Timothy. The Word of God is inspired God. Read number two, it is the source of doctrine, and it is to be used to rebuke. It is the standard to say, you know what? That's not right. I don't care what everybody else is doing. I don't care what all the other churches are doing. I don't care what this standard is over there. It must be measured by the word of God. It is, number four, to be used for correction. And finally, number five, it is for instruction. Paul concludes this, this handbook of serving by giving a charge to young Timothy. It would be the last thing that he writes of instruction all of his life. 
He says to young Timothy, three things. He says, number one, you must preach the word. He says, number two, when you do preach the word, you be prepared. And number three, he says that when you serve the Lord, you must do so with much patience. Whether you're an usher, a member of the worship team, whether you're a greeter, a part of hospitality, whether you're a small group leader or serving in children's ministries or leader among the youth ministries, we're all sharing together in preaching the word. We all must come as Paul challenged, prepared, and we all must be patient to let God accomplish what God is going to do. Oh, God loves you. He truly does. God has a spiritual gift he's already given to you. Now fan the flame. Ground yourself in the doctrine of the word of God. And watch your character that you might be that instrument in the hand of Almighty God. Be ye steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, that you know your life and your labor is not in vain. Thank you for joining us on the series Through the Bible with Dr. William Clements. And you're invited to take part in the Love Dare Challenge with us at Antelope Christian Center this month. You can do that by catching it on YouTube. Just search Shine at Antelope. Read the Love Dare book with us and see how God can powerfully restore and grow marriages. Recently, a husband has been experiencing so many problems in his marriage that he decided to move a hundred miles away from his wife. Yet during this month of the Love Dare Challenge, he started to read the Love Dare book and he returned home to his wife. God is doing miracles in marriages. Jesus is our message and people are our heart. No matter what is going on, I'm standing in my way, I will.